Hello everyone, and welcome back to Medieval. I'm your host Shadorian, and well, we already started the stage, so my bad. <laughs> I also figured out what that percentage means. You can enchant this sword. So I don't know if this is the ultimate stage, but whoa, what the fuck? I don't like that those fucking branches reach for me. Get out of here, you bastards. Oh. Guess that means we can kill the last ones too. God, they, those guys really fucking hurt. Services and supplies. See, enchant sword. Um, we're gonna not, because it's expensive. One tenth of our entire total money. Those things are not cool. Can't believe how much health they take. God damn. Motherfuckers. this is actually doing anything. Damn, I'm supposed to go the other way. I guess it does do something. I don't want to fuck with that. I do like money, and I do like my health files rebuilt. Up and down these magical mushrooms go. 
Well, they take you higher and higher, but be careful not to fall and sink without a trace. Okay, I don't want to go that way just yet. Let's search back here for the stuff that we ran past. Okay, there's a health healer there. Huh. Okay, I guess um, we are looking to press on. Only 55% on that chalice. Okay, we're not supposed to go that way yet. Stop getting stuck on pumpkins, dude. There we go. Pity these guys didn't count as enemies. To be honest, they probably should. Mainly because some of them really seem like they seek you out. Didn't notice that. Geez, we're zooming through the stage. You might be able to get two done. One way. How do we? Oh, it opens up both. I'm gonna go this way. Shit. Like that shit, both head. Okay, I feel like I've got to be careful, like. If I go the wrong way, I'll accidentally finish the level prematurely. Then I'll have to do shit all over again.
Okay, never mind. That feeling is now gone. Now that we've linked back around to where the other gate went. Okay, so... I guess we just go up here. All bow down before the master of the vegetable patch. The prize-winning plant who can summon an army of courage with a wave of his noble tendril. D he's delicious. He's nutritious. He's Zarok's secret recipe. He's the Pumpkin King. Oh shit. The Pumpkin King, eh? Oh fuck. A chalice. God damn it. I'm gonna have to start doing these offline, I think. Otherwise, there's going to be too much back and forth. Oops, no. The Pumpkin Serpent. The Pumpkin... The King Pumpkin sleeps. If you want an audience with the Regal Plant, you should mash all of his pod sacks. That sounds fucking nasty. One pod sack successfully mashed. Kind sir, I am the pumpkin witch. I'm like a mother to those pumpkins. I give them all the love and care a young fruit could ever ask for. From the moment they first push a shoot above the soil, right up until their heads are cut off and eaten. And look, see how they repay me, running around and causing mischief. That nasty old big pumpkin has a bad influence on the young seedlings. If you teach him a lesson in manners, I might give you a nice present. Oh. I like presents. It is rumored that the Pumpkin Witch is in possession of a much sought after dragon gem. If you have a witch talisman, you could summon this kindly witch. It's another one of those nasty fucking. Sacks. Sir Daniel, the sack masher. Is a large pumpkin. I'm just gonna have a look around before I attack the giant one. Four pods remain. remain and then they are. I'm just gonna clear out the enemies here and then I'm gonna go heal up. Seems like a good idea. 
Okay, we'll save that pod right there. That one can stay there. Get too close because that looks like death. Go, son. Jeez, that is a gross, ratty looking pumpkin. Oh, yuck, yuck. Got him. How's that? Happy Halloween, motherfucker. Oh, he was sapping the life out of everything. Defying spectacle, sir. Man and vegetable in a magnificent duel to the death. Oh, I've come over all of a doodar. Here, have this lovely dragon gem as your reward. Oh, lovely majestic creatures dragons are. Cool, what does that even do though? Other, other than remind me of Spyro. One of two. Interesting. Very interesting. And you got done fucked up, son. Now, I wonder where the chalice is, because I want to get at least a chalice per episode. It would be ideal. Chalice can be collected. Where is it? Oh, you motherfucker! Scared the crap out of me. Okay, not in there, obviously. More money. That's where we came in. 
Sure would be cool if the fucking camera would turn around. Oh. Wow, we actually really needed that. Rats! Enchant our sword, but we do need more throwing daggers. Okay, I think we're good now. There's our chalice. Fuck yeah. Alright, let's ignore everything and run for the goal. Success! Off to the Hall of Heroes. Gaining allies in the Hall of the Heroes is the way forward. Cool. Hack, choppity chop, off with a few zombies' heads, and it thinks it can redeem itself in battle. You still have a long way to go to rank as the best. Hey man, I also just chopped up a pumpkin. Okay. Um, is it this one? Nope. Ah, oh, this douche again. By God, Fortescue, you must be the luckiest corpse ever to walk the face of the earth. I have something here I can lend to you. Take it or leave it. But remember, I'm only doing this for the sake of Galomir's doomed population, and not for you, you gangly buffoon! Um, thanks, Jack. Oh, wow. Okay. Lame. Hero statue is not yet solid. Ah, oh, I think if you look in there, we've missed two chalices and there's two dark purple dots flying around with the rest of those. So I guess we've got to go back and get them. That was a pretty uneventful trip to the Hall of Heroes. Guy B's dick gives money. Great. Hell yeah! Yeah, definitely gonna save our progress. Okay. What do we got? Sleeping village. Let's do this one. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. Villagers, the master possesses them. It mustn't hurt them. Hurt guards, though. They seek out an object of great power. Okay. So, no hurty the villagers. Jesus. Villagers want to hurt me, though. Oh shit, okay, instant death. Get away. Sweet, back to square one. Okay, 
we don't go that way. Interesting, we can go in the houses. Old man Willie Green of Gallows Town was awarded Smithy of the Season by our readers. His outstanding casts have produced many intricate and hard-wearing iron goods and sculptures. Willie only uses the finest of metals in his work, and is particularly noted for his magnificent busts. Old man Willie was quoted saying, Aye, when I get to pumping on me bellows, there's no stopping me. It's all in the rhythm. Up and down, up and down. I've always been inspired by the stories of Stanya Iron Hewer, the greatest smithy there ever was. This is actually going to achieve anything. actually doing anything. Alright, I'm gonna just leave. Oh fuck, that little evil child. Alright, let's avoid that. Um, I believe we've found some sort of church. A crucifix once stood here, but the mayor took it. Find a replacement and see how a church should really look. child. Oh shit. The rune key is held aloft by the flow of water on, from the fountain. You may have to wait for the next drought. Chaos rune required. This way, or this way. Oh shit, um, no, we don't want to go this way. Okay, that leads to that. Can't go under the bushes anywhere. Oh! Oh shit! Okay, um, whoops. Must not kill the people. He's going to notice me very soon, so... Oops. Tourist Guide to Galamir, Part 2. If it's mystery you're looking for, then seasoned adventurer should travel to the ruins of King Peregrine's castle. Yes, this is the fortress from which the fabled King Peregrine once hailed. It is said that the King's crown was lost in the dungeons below the castle, and that a ghost of the regent himself now haunts those cold stone passages. 
Spooky. Why not take to the swamps and seek out the mythical town of Mellowmead? This place was once said to be a place of fantastical arcane and alchemy, but an age has passed since it was consumed by the murky swamps. Perhaps a great treasure awaits any adventurer that can locate its watery resting place. Whoops. The land of Galamere is a wondrous land of breathtaking sights and adventure. If it's beauty you are looking for, be sure to check out the sights of the Enchanted Forest. Scale the heights and see the nests of giant dragon birds. Seek out weird and wonderful plant life. Go ooh and ah the sight of baby dragon toads splashing about in the crystal clear ponds. Why not take a walk through the Pumpkin Valley? Pumpkin is Galamere's favorite dish. And how about the valley? And about now the valley is bulging under the weight of young podlings waiting to harvest. <laughs> A good soul has been lost. Fuck! In addition to being the strongest man who ever lived, Stania Ironhewer was unsurpassed in the skill of a, as a blacksmith. He was equally happy pounding on his anvil at home as he was pounding on someone's head in battle. It was said that on, his only fear was the end of the village smithy as focus of manufacture and flavor in favor of more centralized units as if born a humble peasant to one of the, the nomadic tribes from the Eastland blood moaneth skull cleaver gathered an army of horsemen and swept over half the civilized world when he finally died attempting a single-handed attack on a garrison in the north while armed only with the spike of his helmet he was the richest and most powerful peasant of his day. Karl Sternguard spent most of his formative years under siege at his family castle. With his impregnable magic shield, Sternguard's motto was, best form of attack is defense. Sadly, his shield couldn't protect him against poor eating habits, and he died during a post-battle feast while swallowing a large sausage he failed to chew. Truly the hero... The hero's hero, Woden the Mighty, was fearless, single-minded, and uncompromising. Unbeaten in combat, he inspired raw fear in friends and enemies alike, not to mention in close family members and pets. Trained from birth in all forms of combat, Emanzi Shongama was a warrior queen of a tribe of Amazons. The bold and beautiful Shongama banished all males from her territory except the handful she kept on the mow. She kept on to mow the lawns of her people. A full-time mother and homemaker, Megwin Stormbinder had to defend her settlement from barbarian raiders while the menfolk were away on a hunting trip. She fought off repeated attacks armed with only a pitchfork and a rolling pin. And with one arm holding her baby, legend has it that the gods, impressed by her indomitable courage, intervened and added thunderbolts to her arsenal. She won the battle with a couple of bolts to spare on her husband when he finally returned. Jeez, how many of these are there? Dirk Steadfast was a fearsome opponent, opponent thanks to his magic sword that's ours now and a, firm, and a firmly head belief that only women defend themselves real men are always on the attack. He was a friend and contemporary of Karl Sterngard and was with him even in the end. It was while Steadfast was explaining his views on Sterngard's shield during a feast that the latter had his tragic and unexplicit, unexplicit, inexplicable end. <laughs> Can't speak. Descended from the finest centaur bloodstock, Ravenhooves the Archer was the last prince of his people. A proud and haughty aristocrat, he was accomplished. He was an accomplished hunter, sportsman, duelist, playboy, raconteur three times derby winner. Captain of the militia in the time of King Peregrine, Sir Daniel Fortescue found fame when he killed the renegade wizard Zarok, a career soldier raised in the royal household. He was adorned by the men under his command and renowned for his loyalty to Calamir. It was said that Fortescue was always destined for greatness, with his square jaw, steel legays, and thick sh thick shock of hair as black as raven's wings he looked every inch the hero and then we copped a fucking arrow to the face and died to the eye actually um 
During the dark time that was Galamir's not too distant past, it was King Peregrine who thwarted Zarok, the necromancer, had his plan to enslave the land. Zarok, once the king's mage, had fallen out of favor with the ruler for conducting outlandish experiments on the bodies of the dead. It is said that deep within Peregrine's castle the dead were restless. The dead are to be honored, not kept as playthings of alchemists, declared King Peregrine as he banished Zarok from the castle. All of Zarok's living dead were round were rooted out and destroyed. Zarok, being an unforgiving soul, went into hiding and vowed to wreak his revenge on the king. Rumors of ill-doing and dark deeds abound through the land of Galamir. It was whispered that Zarok had employed the aid of, a sh of shadowy demons to help build his vast castle. Under the cover of night, Zarok's dark army spilled forth from their corrupt haven. The army marched south across the Silver Mountains and through the Silver Woods. Soon afterwards, even the pumpkin lands belonged to Zarok. The folk of Gallows Town cried out for help. Save us, good King Peregrine. Retaliation was swift and violent. King Peregrine's forces, led by the brave Sir Fortescue, Fortescue drove Zarok's army back from Gallows Town. There was much rejoicing, but the war was not over yet. News that Zarok's army had now taken the Floodlands caused much concern. From this vantage point, Zarok could march west and take the Enchanted Forest. This sacred place would prove a bitter defeat if it fell into the hands of the evil sorcerer. It was Sir Dan Fortescue who once again led the king's militia to rid the demon host from the land. Yet the evil wizard was cunning and had prepared for an ambush. A titanic battle ensued, in wit of which history had never seen the like. It is said that the day would have gone to Zarok, but for the skill and valor of one man. Fortescue led the charge deep into the massed ranks of the undead, felling Zarok's bodyguard, the fearful Lord Cardock, and before finally succumbing to his own mortal wounds, slew the traitorous sorcerer with a mighty swept sweep of his sword. Huh. The forces of evil were destroyed, but at the terrible at a terrible price. None but a handful of the king's militia had returned from the field. Galumir lost a whole generation of young men that day, including Canny Tim, the legendary crossbowman, and Fortescue's second-in-command, who fell in the first volley of arrows. Zarok's body was never found, though it lies unmourned in an unmarked grave. Then, Though if it lies unmourned in an unmarked grave, then no one in Galumir would shed a tear. The shadow demons that had fallen under Zarok's banner were unnatural creatures that did not belong in this world of mortal men. The king declared that if they be banished, entombed under the pure earth, that they be banished and entombed under the pure earth of enchanted earth, are oh, the place. Imprisoned with an impregnable box of king's design, the demons were buried deep underground. The tomb was sealed with a magical device that has since come to be known as Shadow Artifact. Okay, that's our backstory, I guess. To whom it may concern, I must make haste for Zarok's men will be here within the hour. I have taken the crucifix from the church. It is a key to... a key. I used the cross to make the attached cast, and then I had it destroyed. It is my hope that this cast falls into the hands of a just and good hero, assigned to the town mayor. Okay. I know what we gotta do, but we are... We're in overtime. Um... Nope, not in there. I'm kinda bummed out, because I accidentally killed that dude. I thought he was like one of the gods that they were talking about. Get out of here, you little shit! It's not funny! Okay. Oops. Is 
this what's meant to happen? I'm pretty sure that's just the cost and we don't have the metal to go in it. Eh, I'd better end it here. Anyway guys, if you like what you've seen, like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Ring that notification bell to stay up to date with episodes. Um, we'll pick up this episode fairly soon anyway. But um, yeah, until next time, I've been Shade Orion, and you've been watching Medieval 1 on Dude Go Back. Thanks for watching.